if we ever do an AEW Hall of Fame, certainly the first two people that come to mind, I think that we would have to honor would be Sting and Mr. Brody Lee. Liam Crowley of comicbook.com here with the owner, founder, CEO, president. Actually, I don't even know if he's the CEO anymore. Someone else wanted to take in that title from him. Uh, Mr. Tony Khan of All Elite Wrestling. Tony, so good to see you again. Nice to see you, Liam. Thanks for having me on. So I mentioned, Tony, you may no longer be the CEO of AEW because Mercedes Monet is now all elite. And we're already seeing such a big commitment you're making to her, but also just the women's division as a whole. Uh, she opened the show at Big Business and she also closed the show along with people like Willow Nightingale, Riho, everything going on with Juliet Hart and Sky Blue. So when you make such a big commitment to someone like Mercedes Monet, how does that change how you now approach the structure of booking your weekly television shows for AEW? Well, I, we've always wanted to showcase the top stars in prominent positions. And Mercedes Monet is one of the biggest stars in wrestling. So absolutely, I want to feature Mercedes as prominently in the card as we can. That's why last week in Boston at AEW Big Business, it made great sense for Mercedes to be out there at the start and the end of her first ever Dynamite. This week coming up tonight in Toronto, we've got Mercedes advertised. Everybody knows she's on the show tonight. I think it's great. And she's going to be heavily involved in tonight's show. And it's something you can look forward to. And there's a lot of great competition out there. There's a lot of great wrestlers in AEW and a lot of women that Mercedes has never faced before. And I think it's a lot of great fresh matches. We have a great championship scene here in AEW. And Mercedes definitely, as she's arrived here, I think that the CEO has got so much great tough competition around her here and it creates a lot of exciting potential matchups and certainly we're all excited to have mercedes monet in aew yeah and speaking of that big toronto show we're closing this this episode of dynamite with the big grudge match christian cage versus adam copeland and i want to ask you kind of going along the lines of that booker perspective when you have toronto on the calendar do you approach that show of like, well, we're heading to Toronto, let's give them a match like Christian versus Copeland because of course the hometown connection, or is it the reverse? Is it, we want to run Christian versus Copeland. However, we want to do it in the right city. Let's book Toronto for a match like this. Well, sometimes it depends and it's hard to know that far in advance. Sometimes where you're going to be with the story. This was one of those cases where we knew where we were going to be in it all fit together perfectly, and this was the right time and place. Uh, this was the right city, and we're very excited tonight to come to Toronto for AEW Dynamite and to have this great crowd and have two hometown heroes uh, fighting it out in an I Quit match. Very exciting to have two of the greatest wrestlers ever out of Ontario, Adam Copeland, the Rated R Superstar, and the TNT champion, Christian Cage. It should be an awesome match. I can't wait for this tonight on TBS. And I think that in this case, the match was so huge. This was the obvious city for this match to take place. And we've had this date and this city circled on the calendar for a really long time. It's a really good question. And sometimes I think the matches are big enough where you want to circle the city and the date long in advance and plan ahead. So much as you asked about it, I think it's a, it's a great point. Really, for us, we want to put the emphasis on the biggest matches and making sure they happen at the right place in the right time. And this was the right time for Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage in the I Quit match. And there was no other place than Toronto and TBS tonight for this show. Yeah, the crowd's going to be hot. I'm excited to uh, to just see what they do to each other. Like, it's going to be barbaric. I believe this might be the first I Quit match in AEW. Have we had one of these before? Yes, John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston at uh, Full Gear 2020. But they have been great. There have not been a lot of I Quit matches in AEW. I'm really looking forward to this. And two of the most prominent wrestlers in the world, certainly in this city, two of the greatest wrestlers ever. And I cannot wait. I just think it's going to be a great, great show tonight. It's very unusual for us to have three hours live. We've never done that before on a Wednesday night. So it's going to be pretty cool. And certainly we have the star power and the packed lineup. And we're doing it in the right city with the right fans. Because Toronto's got some of the best wrestling fans in the entire world. And everybody should look forward to tuning into TBS tonight to see these Toronto fans go crazy for AEW Live. 
Mm -hmm. A lot of great Canadians on the AEW roster. I, I'd be remiss, though, if I didn't bring up uh, Kenny Omega. We haven't seen him on television uh, in quite some time. There seems to be some optimism about his recovery. Uh, when's the last time you were uh, in contact with Kenny? Um, you know, on the phone, talking about wrestling pretty recently. And I love Kenny very much. I think he's a great wrestler and a great person. And he's a huge part of AEW. And he helped launch this company. And... He's one of the most important stars in the history of AEW and one of the most important people in the creation of AEW. And we miss Kenny Omega very much. And hopefully he will be back with us soon. And certainly I think the fans will be clamoring for his return and there will be a massive ovation if and when Kenny Omega does come back to AEW. I don't want to put pressure on it. He was really in a bad way. And I don't want to put a timetable or try to rush him back. But I'm optimistic we'll see Kenny Omega again. And certainly it's something for all the fans to look forward to. I think everybody's just going to go crazy when Kenny does come back, which I think we're all very optimistic about there. Yeah, fingers crossed, because as we've seen in recent television, there's a natural story for when he does come back. And oh, boy, don't threaten me with a good time, Tony Khan. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk to you about uh, someone else who's been absent from AEW moving forward. Uh, Sting obviously retired uh, this earlier this month at AEW Revolution. There were some rumblings I saw. I think it was more so fan theories rather than rumors that if and when an AEW Hall of Fame comes together, Sting would be the guy who you would build that first inaugural class around. Have you had conversations like that? Or did you even talk to Sting about some sort of specific honor to give him before he left AEW? We have never talked about a Hall of Fame. Sting is one of the most important people in the history of the wrestling business and certainly one of the most important people ever in AEW. I just spoke with Sting yesterday. The three-year run that he had in AEW is so important to us that Sting wrestled for us for three years from Revolution 21 to Revolution 24 and had this incredible undefeated run, retired as a world tag team champion, avenged an attack on his family, stood up for his family and had this amazing moment side by side with Darby Allen, the best tag team partner he's ever had in Sting's own words and Sting's family to be able to celebrate and get some payback on the people that hurt Sting's family. It was a really special night. And it was my greatest night ever in the wrestling business and probably one of the greatest nights of my life. I felt like it was just something really special we did for all those fans and especially for Sting and his family. And it was a real honor and Sting will always be part of AEW. And he's really part of the family and somebody we care very much about here. Uh, I'm very happy we were able to give such a great send off to Sting. If we ever do an AEW Hall of Fame, Certainly the first two people that come to mind, I think that we would have to honor would be Sting and Mr. Brody Lee, two of the greatest champions and two of the greatest people we've ever had in AEW. Uh, very different circumstances, but I think those would be the first two people that come to my mind that I think of uh, would be Sting and Mr. Brody Lee, somebody that never got to wrestle in AEW that I also feel very strongly about uh, who needs to be talked about and honored is Jay Briscoe who I always wanted to bring into AEW and was my friend and was friends with a lot of people in the locker room and is one of the greatest wrestlers I've ever had the pleasure to work with and produce. And Jay Briscoe, somebody else, very important to all of us, even though he never actually got the chance to wrestle in AEW. Uh, and I do think Sting and Mr. Brody Lee would be great people to build any Hall of Fame class around. Wow. Well, whenever the day does come, I, I know that those guys will all be immortalized in their own uh, respective ways. And uh, yeah, here's hoping one day, you know, maybe five, 10 years down the line, but I, I know it'll happen eventually. And ROH did put an inaugural Hall of Fame class out. And thankfully, the Briscoes were included in that. And that was uh, while Jay was still with us. So I'm glad that he got that honor. And I'm sorry. I really wish uh, Jay had gotten to wrestle with us in AEW. Lord knows I really tried. Yeah, well, here is, you know, his memory is continuing on uh, Mark Briscoe, of course, getting that title shot at Supercard of Honor coming up in just a couple of weeks. Uh, but looking forward down uh, to deep into the summer, we got AEW all in London returning again to Wembley Stadium, a show I'm so stoked about because this time around, you got a year to build it. We, the anticipation is growing. 
uh, much higher than it was last year and just the confined, you know, couple of months you had to build towards the card. We saw some things uh, last year, you know, it was very late in the game. It was announced that it was going to be on pay-per-view. Uh, there were some rumblings about streaming on Max and stuff like that. With the TV rights negotiations coming up, you know, later in the year, you've said that you're going to address those negotiations when contracts start to expire. Is All in London going to be too soon to go on Max or is that something that, you know, maybe something can be worked out? We'll have to see. I think we're uh, actively negotiating right now. And at that point, uh, we'll be deep in the conversations. So it's hard to say this year. I think certainly going forward, that's a good possibility for us. And something I would be really excited about would be bringing AEW to Max. And it's something I think we've talked about. It just has to make sense for everybody. And I do think when we find a streaming home for AEW, that's going to be a long-term plan and given the that we're up at the end of this year i think one of the reasons i've wanted to wait is i think when we get the streaming contract figured out it should be a long-term solution for the fans so that everybody who's waited so long to see this i mean it's amazing what we've accomplished in five years not only some of the best pay-per-views of the last several decades but i think honestly some of the best pay-per-views I've ever seen, and I'm biased, but I really believe in the quality of the big events that we've done. And I think a lot of people would attest to the quality of those those shows. We've done over 230 episodes of Wednesday Night Dynamite, well over 100 episodes of Friday Night Rampage, and uh, coming up on one year of Collision. I also acquired the Ring of Honor library a couple of years ago, and there's so many great events and great stars in there. A lot of the great wrestlers of the last 20 years and also uh, a lot of great stars who are in AEW right now, as well as people wrestling right now, some of the big stars that are not in AEW. So it's a very, very lucrative collection that I acquired. And uh, there's a lot of great wrestling there in addition to all the great footage we built in AEW. So the library is a big part of it, but also as you alluded to, the, probably the thing that would drive the most interest potentially would be our major events and having access to those on such a streaming platform. And Max is one of the greatest streaming platforms in the world. I think it has the best collection of content anywhere in the world. And we'd love to be a part of it. And it's something we're actively talking about. We have a really, really strong relationship with the current Warner Brothers Discovery Management. There have been a lot of changes at Warner Brothers Discovery since we came. In fact, when we came, it was still Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Media. And uh, the family from Discovery that's come in, they're big AEW fans. And Mr. Zasloff and Kathleen Finch, Bruce Campbell, and Jason Sarlanis. They've all been very, very kind. and We've had great meetings with all of them. And they've all taken a major interest in AEW, the pay-per-views, the streaming concepts, and the television shows. And that's why they also, this year, increased AEW's content, giving us two more hours of television, which has been great. Our pay-per-views have been stronger than ever, and it's allowed us to launch more pay-per-views, to build more stories, to do more great matches on TV every week, going from three hours of TV with Wednesday Night Dynamite, like tonight, and Friday Night Rampage, now adding Saturday Night Collision. It's been tremendous. Some of the best matches in wrestling and some of the best moments in wrestling over the past year have been on Collision, and we're going to keep that going. And something that we're really, really excited about going forward is obviously the opportunity to renew our media rights and look for where we're going to be doing these shows. And certainly there's no better place for us than where we are right now. It's tremendous being able to do wrestling every Wednesday night, like tonight on TBS, and Fridays and Saturdays on TNT. And I'm glad you asked about it because Max certainly is uh, my streaming platform of choice and would be a great home for AEW. Absolutely. Yeah. Once we get that AEW tab on Max, I think the game is going to change completely. Uh, to speak a little bit further about All in London, I don't want any spoilers, Tony. I don't want you to tell me what you're thinking, but I do want to ask, have you begun to at least conceptualize the card that you're going to have in August? Yes, definitely. I've spent a lot of time thinking about August's card, and I'm very excited about it. The arrival of some of the biggest free agents in pro wrestling has given us even more exciting possibilities for what we can do. I'm really excited for All in London, and I think this year we can go back. We had the best show possible last year, and I think now we're going to go back. Last year, 
we set a world record, 81,035 fans, uh, the most tickets ever sold for any pro wrestling event in the history of the planet. And we set certainly a very, very high bar to say the least. And it's amazing because as you said, we got off to an earlier start this year. We put the tickets on sale several months earlier than we had for the inaugural AEW all in. And it's been a huge success. And I mean, we're way ahead of the pace, you know, at this time last year, we had sold zero tickets. So we're way ahead of that pace to say the least and moving really well. And it's just going to keep building and getting more exciting. I've spent a lot of time thinking about the card and as we've added big free agents in recent months, have had more thoughts about great things we can do. I do think we've shown that AEW is where the best wrestle. AEW is the home to the best wrestlers in the world and the best free agents are coming to AEW. The AEW roster is getting stronger and there's never been a better time for a wrestler to want to come to AEW to prove themselves because the quality of the competition here and the quality of the shows that we're putting on is very high. We're setting a tremendous standard here, and that's why the best wrestlers in the world want to be in AEW right now. We talked a lot about you know the content, the streaming rights, all that kind of stuff. Something I've seen with AEW uh, expansion-wise in the content game uh, is the digital presence. We, we've seen, uh, obviously, RJ City's got uh, the show every Sunday, uh, but we now have Renee Paquette doing an inter interview series uh, on you know AEW's YouTube channel, a bunch of different digital programs, the little pre-shows that happen, sometimes with Lexi Nair, sometimes with Smart Mark Sterling, stuff like that. When it comes to doing AEW storytelling on digital, do you look at that as something that's like, auxiliary to the televised product or are there ever times where you're like no we can really tell this storyline strictly through the process of social media and you know maybe not dedicate too much tv time to it i think we want to try to tell the stories on television when we can but it's important to remember really the roots of AEW are digital and before there was dynamite we built up double or nothing and the first all out online and really the original all in was largely built through digital fan engagement as well before AEW even launched so it's important to remember some of the roots of the company are building up big events through digital media doing stuff on social media but then through the launch of our tv i think we've grown so much and when we're at our best we're doing great tv shows and putting out great digital products and I think we've been on a great run of that in recent months. I felt like things really stepped up to a new level when we introduced the Continental Classic at the end of last year. Some of the best digital content was the interviews coming out of the Continental Classic. And there were a lot of them. And a lot of times there'd be a ton of great interviews coming out of Dynamite. Going into Collision, I would you know show the interviews on social media and fans would be able to watch these extended digital interviews and then we would take the best ones and show them then on collision and then after the blue league matches on collision we had great interviews and we would follow up show them all on social media and in the extended form and then take the best of those and then show those on dynamite and keep people in the mix on what was happening on both shows and make the continental classic must see throughout the week and there was a lot of anticipation for the matches and the event I felt like it really helped us build up a new pay-per-view event, World's End, that was a huge hit. And then coming out of that, there was really a lot of buzz going into 2024, which has just been a great year for AEW since it started. We've had so many exciting things, and I think this is a, a huge year for us. First and foremost, we've put on great shows for the fans. We've brought in the top three agents. We've got the best champions. We've got some of the best rivalries right now. And I really believe AEW is at a high point as we speak going into tonight's show in Toronto. And I think tonight's event is really important. We had a major show last week with AEW Big Business. There's a lot of interest in the company and the matches tonight are huge. I think to have something as big as Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland in an I Quit match in Toronto that's a huge headline match. And then when you consider Okada versus Kingston, Mercedes Monet being back here in AEW and the first time we officially advertised Mercedes on Dynamite. And Jericho versus Hook, 
Tony Storm and Mariah May versus uh, Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa. That's a great match. And then we have a three-hour block with great matches coming up after Dynamite as part of a three-hour show with the street fight. Julia Hart and Sky Blue versus Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale, which is going to be very exciting. And continuing the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament that got off to a great start this past weekend. I'm very excited to see the Don Callis family, Will Hobbs and Kyle Fletcher versus Orange Cassidy and Trent. Is this when Orange and Trent win the big one? And very excited about that and uh, should be a great card tonight. Try to put the best matches and the best rivalries, showcase those on our TV shows. And I think this is the best example of that. And we'll capture a lot of great digital content coming out of this show. And I'm excited about that, too. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things I want to expand upon there. Uh, specifically, you mentioned uh, the Continental Classic, how much of a hit that was. And I know everyone is hoping that it returns again in the fall. We have Eddie Kingston defending the Continental Crown Championship by its lonesome against Kazuchika Okada. Obviously, in his prior defenses, he was also defending the strong open weight title and the Ring of Honor world title together. So now it seems like you might be doing it a little separately. But a clarifying question I want to ask to you in a scenario where someone like Okada wins the Continental Crown before, you know, December rolls around of this year, if you're planning on bringing back the Continental Classic, would you have a new champion go into the Continental Classic and defend the title? Or do things start from scratch when a hypothetical Continental Classic sequel comes about? Whoever is the champion going into the Continental Classic, they will put the title up going into the Continental Classic and uh, they will have the opportunity to retain it by winning the tournament. And the Continental title will be defended under the Continental rules for the rest of the year. No outside interference, nobody allowed at ringside, just like tonight's match. Okada versus Eddie Kingston. There will be no outside interference. Nobody will be allowed at ringside. They're going to have a great wrestling match. Okada versus Kingston tonight. The winner of Okada versus Kingston tonight will be the Continental Champion. And they will go into the tournament. And uh, whoever it is, they will be defending the, the Continental Crown. And I'm very excited about going into the tournament this year with a champion. And somebody having the opportunity to defend the title throughout the year and at so many great events coming up and the winner of Okada versus Kingston tonight is going to be the continental champion and they're going to have a huge line of contenders that want a shot at this title because we built up the prestige. Everybody wants to be in the continental classic and we had a great lineup of wrestlers in it last year, but it's also going to be a lot of pressure. Whoever wins this match, they're going to have the belt in March. And here we are in March. And realistically, you know, we're about eight months from the start of the next Continental Classic. So it's going to be a long haul. And whoever wins it, I think they've got a lot of tough defenses in front of them. And whoever is the champion coming out of full gear, they will defend the title in the Continental Classic. And then at World's End, we will determine... Uh, who will be the Continental Champion at the end of 2024. Yeah, for the sake of the AEW roster, you better hope Kingston pulls through because we know how Okada performs in round-robin tournaments. He's He's got a pretty good track record when it comes to competing in different blocks. Uh, another thing you mentioned that I wanted to expand upon was bringing back that feeling. Uh, Osprey said it this past Wednesday on Dynamite, restoring the feeling to AEW. And you sent out a tweet this past January that 2024 AEW was going to be the new 2021. Um, and it feels like especially after bringing in Osprey officially, having Okada, Mercedes now on the roster. We also gave Dynamite a fresh coat of paint. I asked you this uh, a, a couple of media scrums ago about when are we going to get an updated logo for Dynamite? And I'm glad to see, you know, the new color format and everything. Was that in mind? Were you, were you rebranding Dynamite with the idea of like, okay, well, you know, we have a bunch of new talent and we want to restore the feeling, give it that fresh feel going into 2024. Was that all operating synergetically? Yes, that was the idea. Coming out of Revolution, it's going to be a new AEW. We knew that coming out of Revolution, we would have said goodbye to Sting and introduced Will Ospreay. And then over the next two weeks, with this new look for Dynamite, we were going to be introducing new stars into the AEW galaxy with the arrival of 
Okada, and then the arrival of Mercedes Monet. And we've had these huge free agents, and I'm going to keep my foot on the gas pedal throughout the year to make AEW the best wrestling promotion in the world. Right now, we have the best roster, and I believe AEW is where the best wrestle. And we can continue to make it that by attracting the best free agents and putting on the best shows. And it starts with events like tonight, with big matches like Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland, I quit match, like Eddie Kingston versus... Kazuchika Okada for the Continental Championship, Jericho versus Hook, Tony Storm and Mariah May versus Diana Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa, and so many more great matches coming up. Of course, the, the street fight at the end of the night where we've got Julia Hart and Sky Blue versus Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander, Orange Cassidy and Trent versus Will Hobbs and Kyle Fletcher, and so much more to look forward to. And Again, Mercedes Monet will be appearing tonight on Dynamite. That's something to look forward to. And I think throughout the year, you can look forward to how the roster develops, the twists and turns we take. It's going to be a great, great year for AEW. Absolutely. And something that has changed significantly is, to my knowledge, this is the first time in AEW's history where not a single member of the four pillars, so to speak, is active right now. Uh, I feel like throughout all of AEW's five years, at least one of that group of four has been an active member of the roster. Uh, and someone I did want to bring up uh, was Jack Perry. He has this new character going on in New Japan Pro Wrestling right now. And it's something that we haven't seen on AEW television before. So if and when he comes back to AEW TV, are you planning on continuing what he's built over there in New Japan? Well, I think you got to stay tuned. Uh, absolutely, Jack's doing great things in New Japan. The New Japan Cup, he's had a great run. He's established himself over there. He feels he's the scapegoat. But he's doing great things, and he's wrestling for a great promotion, and it's been great tracking Jack's progress in New Japan. And I think he's done excellent work there. Uh, we mentioned that we're in this kind of new era with AEW. We're restoring the feeling in 2024. When December 31st rolls around and you look back on 2024 for AEW, what's something you really hope to see your company achieve? I hope that at the end of 2024, the fans feel like this was a great year for AEW and the excitement is there going into 2025. Most importantly, for all the people that work here and for all the fans, we need to get a great media rights deal in place and secure the future of AEW for many, many years to come. And I think that's really important, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, well, here's looking forward to a big year for AEW. Mr. Tony Khan, thank you again for your time. Thank you, Liam. It was great to see you. I really appreciate you doing this.